Hello, and thank you for joining us on Giving Voice to Depression. I'm Bridget. And I'm Terry. More than 350 million people worldwide suffer from depression, but you do not have to have it yourself to be affected by it. Its prevalence pretty much guarantees that someone you care about battles its darkness. This podcast tries to shine some light into that darkness. We're not experts and we're not therapists. We're sisters and best friends who live with depression and who are committed to encouraging healthy, healing conversations about mental illness. Hi, Terry. Hi, Bridget. Do you remember in our last episode when we spoke with Lisa about postnatal depression, also called postpartum? Yes, and that's one we've all heard of. Right. And today we're going to talk with Isabel about one I hadn't heard of called antipartum. And antipartum depression is depression during your pregnancy. Isabel is a 32-year-old mother of two who reached out from Berkeley, California to talk to us to make sure that people understood this expression of depression. One of the hardest times I've experienced with the depression was when I was pregnant. To say that you're depressed when you're pregnant, I mean, people just like do not understand that. Especially, I mean, we was a wanted baby. I'm, you know, we're married, we're comfortable. We have what looks like this, you know, beautiful, perfect family. And I wanted to be pregnant. Then I just wanted to die. Not the narrative we usually hear from new mothers. But given that, according to the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, between 14 and 23 percent of women will struggle with some symptoms of depression during pregnancy, maybe we don't hear it because new mothers don't feel safe saying it. I felt like there was more stigma to that then than there had been at any other point when I was ever depressed. Like it was okay to be depressed when, you know, somebody broke my heart in college and I didn't want to get out of bed, but... When I was pregnant with a two-year-old, I was supposed to be happy. You know, I know the conversation around postpartum depression has changed a lot in like the last 10 years, and people are more aware of that. And I hope that people can continue to be even more aware of that and also to be aware of that depression can happen during pregnancy. Can you imagine a more hormonal thing happening in your body than making another body? I mean, it's a lot. I'm glad you opened my eyes to that because I'm not sure I have ever really asked a pregnant woman, you know, how are you doing? Yeah, right. And the fear, there's so much oh. fear around childbirth. And I mean, I was like, I was living in Boulder when I had my first baby, my son, and I was in the whole kind of crunchy, I have a midwife and I'm going to be natural and I'm doing yoga and I'm taking all my supplements and this is going to be a beautiful, like spiritual experience. And nobody told me that the spiritual experience part comes because you think do you believe you're going to die? <laughs> like, that's the spiritual experience. It's not like the sun comes out. It's like you plunge into the depths of Hades or something for a while. Like, uh. So, yeah, pregnancy and childbirth weren't quite as advertised. But Isabel had her beautiful baby boy now. Surely the worst was behind her. But then after I had my son... I had postpartum depression, which was absolutely brought on by uh, sleep disruption. That really messed me up. And and then my son was almost two when I got pregnant with my daughter. And with her pregnancy, it was very different. And it was like hormonally, some kind of switch was flipped the minute I got pregnant with her. It just felt like I'm so angry and sad, but I know there's no reason for it. It was like that all the time, through the entire pregnancy. In fact, Isabel says for the past five years or so, her depression has never really gone away completely, but her relationship to it has changed. I guess sometimes I've got it very much managed. You know, it's almost like diabetes, I think, where like if you're eating well and you're exercising and maybe you're taking your medicine every day, you can keep it in the, the space you want to keep it in. As needed therapy sessions, regular exercise, though she hates it, affordable daycare at the Y while she works out, and understanding friends all help Isabel manage her depression. Because the thing about depression is that it makes it very easy to blame your feelings on all these outside factors, you know? And sometimes, like, especially if you have situational depression, like, there is an outside factor. But that's only sort of true, you know? And so to try to embrace the whole 
picture and to have somebody remind you, yes, maybe there's something that, you know, you could fix in that situation, or maybe there's a problem with that situation, but also you're depressed. And so also it feels worse than it is. Worse than it is and pretty much hopeless. And it makes me feel like this, things are so terrible and they're never going to get any better. They're just never going to get any better. And I still have days where I feel like that, but I'm better now at reminding myself, you're having one of those days. It's not actually real. Like it's my reality today, but tomorrow I might feel differently. And there've been lots of times in my life when I couldn't do that. I couldn't remind myself of that. I was in it too deep. And I'm sure I'll, I'll be in one of those periods again where I can't remind myself of that. But having somebody else remind me, even if I don't want to hear it at that moment, it is helpful. Isabel says it's also really helpful to hear other people's stories, which is why she reached out to Giving Voice to Depression to share hers. Because I think part of our struggle with depression in this modern age that we live in is that we have all these expectations that we're not supposed to be sad and we're not supposed to be angry and we're not supposed to feel despair and we're supposed to just live in this kind of middle place all the time where we're happy and we're satisfied, but we're not too excited about anything and we don't get too riled up. But we also don't get too sad. And I think that that's really unhealthy. And that if we could embrace the full spectrum of our human emotions and we could just be okay with sitting in it when we're depressed, that the depression passes faster. Sitting in it. Hmm. I mean, sometimes it seems like you don't really have much of an option anyway. And surrendering to it might at least lessen the inner struggle. I don't know, maybe I just listen to too many Buddhist podcasts now, but I feel like that has helped me more than anything is this idea of just being in it when you're in it and trusting that the only thing you have to really trust is that you, you're, you're not going to be there forever, you know, that if you can only remember that, that then you can get to the next moment and the next moment and the next moment and eventually something shifts and it feels different. I think Isabel hit the nail on the head. It's that being able to keep that perspective that it won't last. And as I was listening to her speak, I was thinking, I should write down when I'm in a good space, like a letter to myself to reframe myself and anchor myself in the reality that this is temporary, even though it feels permanent. Absolutely. It is so hard. But then she has given her friends permission to say, yeah, I understand. You know, you, you feel that way and, and there are probably some real things about it. But also, as she said, you're depressed and it might seem worse than it is. And that's a right. good reminder. Oh, my gosh. It really is. When we started this podcast, Terry, I was thinking that we were making a forum or a safe place for people to share their experiences so that those of us who don't hear people talk about it very often would would start to find a vocabulary and start to realize that we're not alone. But lately, it feels to me like they are literally giving voice to depression. You know, that that voice in our head that is so doom and gloom and um like omnipresent mm-hmm. oppression. They're they're actually like putting words to it in a way that is a different play on giving voice to depression that I so appreciate and value giving voice to the voice of depression exactly yes exactly realizing it's a voice Mm -hmm. you know that objectification creates a little bit of a separation between you are it and it is a voice that's you're experiencing right now the difference to me is just vast right yeah but boy pregnancy i mean between the raging hormones everything is new everything Your body, your relationship to your free time, your identity, your marriage, it just goes on and on. It's your relationship to who you are is just morphing. It is. And, you know, it's beautiful. Let's not forget that part of it. But it's also a lot of other things. It's kind of nice to have someone finally, you know, pull the curtain back and say, oh, wait, there's no Oz. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it is what it is. You know, and that's what this is all about. Just being real because it's the whole spectrum of human emotion. And you can love your baby and you can be freaked out by it. And you can love your life and you can be depressed as hell some days. And your next pregnancy may or may not be the same or tomorrow may not be the same. Right. True that.
So a special thank you to Isabel for being real about her experience and for sharing it with us and with other women. I learned a lot from her just about the way we speak to our depression and to ourselves during it. Exactly. Thanks, Isabel. We hope that our podcasts bring about a little more understanding or help people articulate their experience of depression a little more. And thanks to each and every person who's digging deep and finding the words and finding the courage to give voice to depression. And you can find our podcasts on our website, givingvoicetodepression.com, as well as on iTunes, where we hope you will subscribe, rate, and respectfully comment. And please remember, if you're hurting, speak up. If someone else is hurting, listen up.